You there, lowly toiler. You stand in the presence of a member of the illustrious Lawrence clan. I have words for you. Please acknowledge the glory bestowed upon thee by the nobility, and solemnly kneel to the ground with utmost sincerity. <sighs> huh? Why don't you respond? According to the custom, I must wait until you kneel completely before I can say the next words. Ah, right. I mustn't look at you too long, or I'll be drawing more attention to our difference in status. Oh dear, I've already stared at you for quite a while. <sighs> Fine. You may spare yourself the formality of kneeling, as it may be a little inconvenient. I shall continue. Oh, wait. I think there's a line for people with rude attitudes in this situation. Hey, stop bothering me or else I might say something you wouldn't like to hear. Then again, I've got no words for anyone from the Lawrence clan. Again? What's with this attitude? Yes, I don't think his attitude will change. If I keep grandstanding like this, the outcome won't be good. Let's try to find someone else to talk to. Hm. I'll remember your unwillingness to comply. Mark my words, vengeance will be mine! Huh? You there, lowly worker. I... Yeah, I've already heard it all before. Look, just spare me the time. Our answer's always the same. We've got nothing to say to the likes of you. I mean, seriously, can't you just take a hint? Please calm down. We don't want to cause any trouble. Ah, I know she's a knight of Favonius, and that the knights wouldn't misplace their trust, but the name Lawrence carries too much weight with it. Even to this very day, the descendants of the Lawrence clan are still scheming to reclaim Mondstadt and reinstate their aristocratic rule. And if that wasn't enough, here you are purposefully using their awkward way of speaking just to put on an act? Don't you care for the feelings of us ordinary folk? You have a point. But mark my words, this transgression will not go unnoticed. <laughs> huh? You want to fight? Listen here. I may be no match for you, but I'll be sure to lodge a complaint with the Knights of Favonius. I'm sorry, but I want her to understand that I'm serious. Listen here. If you don't want things to get more unpleasant, then you'd better just stop. Forget it. There's no point in quarreling any further. Let's go. <sighs> It's all right. This happens quite often. Let's find someone else to talk to. Uh, Paimon thinks we've seen enough now. Let's just stop. Actually, Paimon thinks we should apologize for asking you to demonstrate for us. We had no idea the feelings between the Lawrence clan and the people of Mondstadt were so bitter. <laughs> what can we do? The Lawrence name is already a dirty word among every household in Mondstadt. Even three-year-olds know the story. I see this kind of attitude all the time. <sighs> Don't worry. What with me being a knight of Favonius, they're usually willing to speak a few words with me. Perhaps my aristocratic manner of speech provoked them today. Believe me, it's not a big issue. So this is the way things are normally for you? There's no need for them to direct their anger at you personally. That's the way things are. Perhaps it's just fate for those who have made mistakes. Accepting punishment is only fair, right? But when your family has committed atrocities, I'm afraid there's no easy path to reconciliation. As memories are carried in the city breeze, the faults of such grievances are passed from one generation to the next. It is now my turn to bear this burden. At least I have a means of living a relatively normal life compared to the elders of my family. I have nothing to be discontented about. Yeah! Why were you so willing to try and demonstrate for us? Oh, that reminds me. That last person will not escape my vengeance either. <sighs> Let's leave it at that. Just think of it as something I like to do. But unfortunately, you probably didn't learn much from those conversations. It seems we have no other choice but to find more people to talk to. Uh, no need! Besides, the Traveler's pretty sharp, and nothing gets in our way on an adventure! 
Everyone thinks we got the gist of it now. Right? Right? We'll just have to roll with it for now. Let's just keep Eula from getting anyone else riled up. Well then, I'm glad you learned something. You're already halfway toward mastering aristocratic conduct. A proper manner of speech is more aesthetic than anything else. It stems from their taste for refinement. But we must also practice your bearing. I have a very effective way of training for this. Come with me to Dragonspine. To truly achieve the dignified conduct of an aristocrat, you must learn to remain composed and elegant even amidst harsh conditions. For example, you can see that part of the path up ahead is quite difficult to traverse. But a well-trained aristocrat would not only effortlessly proceed forward, but do so without a stain on their garment and their elegance fully intact. Hyman thinks we've left the realm of aristocrats and entered the realm of adventuring. Compared to what we've already seen, this should be a piece of cake. Paimon thinks so too, but you've got this in the bag. <laughs> you look pretty confident this time. All right, let's get started. Remember, you must be graceful and elegant. Don't get knocked or launched into the air. That would be most unsightly. Rise! Gather! Not bad. A lot better than I had anticipated, at least. <sighs> I almost didn't make it through! Whew. Good thing we didn't get stuck. Um, so, are we aristocrats now? <laughs> <laughs> Don't flatter yourselves. We've only just begun. This scenario was relatively simple. In the face of a real battle, one would seldom have a chance to stop and evaluate the situation. There's a leyline monolith just up ahead that will attract nearby monsters. True elegance is the ability to calmly yet swiftly make decisions in the heat of battle. My family set only the highest expectations for me, even as a child. Let's proceed, shall we? This is the Leyline Monolith. Go ahead, activate it. But be careful not to get launched into the air or frozen while fighting. That would be most unsightly. This is order. Well done. Your performance was most impressive. And you managed to remain calm even in these grueling dragonspine surroundings. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if even I could have done the same. Given such an outstanding performance, it seems there is little left for me to teach you. Like Paimon said, adventuring is our specialty! Uh, so, that's it for our training, right? Then let's get out of Dragonspine before Paimon turns into a popsicle! Ooh. Hold on. I was commending the Traveler's performance just now. You, on the other hand, seem to have made no progress at all. Uh, what? You mean Paimon was also part of the training? Yes, of course. 
You are frantically flying and dashing about throughout the entire thing. Not an elegant sight at all. Did you even listen to anything I was trying to teach you? Yeah, that's it. It's too cold here. Uh, besides, Paimo is paying attention to the Traveler. Whatever the reason, not heeding my instructions. A cause for vengeance, perhaps. <sighs> now, drink this. Huh? What is it? <gasps> Are you trying to poison Paimon? Certainly not. It's warm milk. Didn't you just say that you were freezing? Drink it and it'll help warm you up. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, are you still planning on the whole vengeance thing? If I wasn't, then why would I care about you being cold? If you turned into a Paimon popsicle, that would ruin my plans for vengeance now, wouldn't it? So, dear friend, don't die on me out here. Ah! Paimon knew something was off! All in the name of vengeance. No need to thank me. Now then, given that your training is complete, it's time we return to Mondstadt. Our last step will be preparing a cordial gift to present to my uncle when you meet him. I already have something in mind. Let's pay Sarah a visit at Good Hunter. Oh, hey, Eula. I see you've met the Honorary Knight. We meet again, Amber. Seems we're just bound to run into you these days. Well, I just got back and was thinking about grabbing a bite at Good Hunter. But now that you're here, why don't we all eat together? Very well. It's been some time since we've last shared a meal together. Come, take a seat. We can discuss my uncle's gift while we eat. Yes? Is there something else you'd like to order? Could you please prepare a serving of my uncle's favorite, Gebrotinus Fleisch mit Sauerkraut? We'll take it as a gift to him later. Coming right up! <laughs> It'll take some time to prepare. I'll have it here at the counter once it's ready. Uh, hold on a moment. Is this satisfying salad also something that Amber ordered? No, she didn't order it. But because she didn't order any vegetables, I thought I'd throw in a salad on the house. You know, to contrast all the meat dishes. So, we clearly didn't order this, yet you prepared it without authorization. <laughs> Mark my words, this transgression will not go unnoticed. Uh, you're gonna take revenge on her for giving us a free salad? You should know me by now. That's the kind of villainous character I am. <laughs> well then, please wait a moment while I get the dish for your uncle started. <laughs> Delicious unauthorized delicacies. Sarah will pay for this. Why would you choose Gibraltinus Fleischmidt sauerkraut as a gift for your uncle? Hyman's never even heard that dish before. This dish isn't actually on Good Hunter's menu. Only long standing patrons such as my uncle would know about the dish. The old aristocrats seem to take a liking to it. Because of the sour flavor of the sauerkraut, not too many people are fond of it these days. I guess it's become less popular over time. Eula treated me to the dish once, and I couldn't even finish a bite. I've nicknamed it Gebratenes Fleischmidt Vengeance ever since. Ugh. I never expected us to have such completely different tastes in food. If I weren't in such a good mood, I'd say that constitutes grounds for transgression. Of course not. It's hard to find someone in Mondstadt that attracts contempt as much as she does. <laughs> it's fine when you're just joking between us, but I'm afraid our honorary knight might misunderstand you. Eula's always talking about vengeance, but that's just how she is. It's nothing you should take too seriously. But I am serious, and I'll remember every transgression committed against me. Ugh, it's no wonder so many people dislike you. Paimon's starting to realize that Eula is actually a very good person. There's no need to be so awkward when you want to say something nice. <sighs> Listen, you've never been labeled as a social pariah, have you? Uh, well... 
No? So that's why you wouldn't understand how hard it is for a bad person to try to be good. It's impossible for me, and I have no intention of acting like a good person. All right, no need to look so sullen. I'm just kidding. Come on, let's eat. The food is getting cold. Oh, I'm stuffed. I'll see Sarah about the bill. No need. I've left the mora under the plate. If you try to settle it with her in person, she won't accept payment for the salad. Don't underestimate my ability to exact revenge. <laughs> Sarah won't get the upper hand this time. All right. Next, you should pay my uncle a visit. He has a small camp at the top of the mountain near Springvale. He usually whiles his time away there when there's nothing else to do. Uh, aren't you coming with us, Yua? I'm afraid that wouldn't be very convenient for me. It'd be better if you two went alone. Ah, yes. Please do remember to pick up the dish from Sarah. I still have more recon to do in the wilderness. Well, until next time! Let's meet again. What an interesting bunch you are. Here! The Gabratinus Fleischmith sauerkraut is ready to go! <laughs> be sure to eat it while it's hot, otherwise the flavor will be spoiled. And by the way, don't worry too much when Eula says strange things. She's actually a very good person. Paimon's been meaning to ask. No one could stand the sight of Eula when she was trying to speak with the others in Mondstadt earlier. But she seemed to get along fine with you and Amber just now. What's up with that? The people of Mondstadt don't take kindly to anyone bearing the Lawrence name. They are unable to see past her family, therefore they don't actually see Eula for herself. So no matter what Eula tries to do, it's seen as a wrongdoing. It essentially strips the meaning of anything she tries to accomplish. How come you're able to see Eula differently then? Well, when she joined the Knights of Favonius, it caused quite an uproar. Many people signed a petition demanding that the Knights reverse their decision. At the same time, numerous members of the Lawrence clan crowded the entrance of the Knights of Favonia's headquarters, clamoring for Eula to give an explanation. Oh, so both sides were unhappy. That's right. So you can imagine how determined Eula must have been under such circumstances. But thanks to Grandmaster Varka and the unwavering attitudes of others in the Knights of Favonius, they were able to quell the unrest. Tensions still remain beneath the surface, I'm afraid. In the eyes of the people, she's a stain on the Knights of Favonius. And in the eyes of the Lawrence clan, she's a disgrace to her family. But she simply fulfills her duty as a knight, silently helping one person after another, myself included. People like Eula should be approached with care and understanding. She could stand to be treated a little more fairly. I believe a day will come when things will get better. Once everything's settled, we should go talk to Eula again. Paimon thinks we know how to communicate with her now. I'm glad. I think that would make her very happy. Though, she might not ever admit it. Take care. Please, come again. Ah, it's you again. 
I thought I had rid myself of you two. A few humble words, huh? Yes, that sounds appropriate enough. Very well. I'm certainly not one to be narrow-minded. I'll overlook your previous misconduct for now and listen to what you have to say. Wow, this guy thinks so highly of himself. Hmm, it appears I have misjudged you. Supreme brilliance. The glory of the nobility that continues to this day. A true loyalist. Impressive. My intentions were to test your humility. It appears you have become well versed in our etiquette. Oh, so he was testing us. Sheesh, what an ordeal. Your conduct is satisfactory. I must say, such progress in such a short time is practically unfathomable. If I may ask, from whence did you learn such a civilized manner of speech? Ah, good. Very good. You are bright, and compared with the common folk of Mondstadt, you certainly have potential. If you were of aristocratic blood, your prospects would be promising indeed. By the way, we brought a gift! Ahem. Paimon means we would like to present you with a small token of our goodwill. Huh? Could this be? Gebratnis Fleisch meets Sauerkraut? It's evident that your sentiment is genuine. As a young person nowadays, only with no small effort could you achieve such a dish. It's been so long since I dug into a big, tasty... Uh, I, I beg your pardon. What I mean to say is, since it's nearly mealtime, I shall partake. Ah, yes, this aroma, just as I remember it. And this exquisite sour flavor. Mmm. A delicacy that only us noblemen and women could appreciate. Now even Paimon's starting to wonder what it tastes like. I acknowledge your genuine goodwill. Such sincerity must certainly imply that you come bearing a request. Uh, wait, so you've come to know of this, too? It was meant to be a family secret. Hmm. Well, considering your meticulous etiquette, you must be a talent of unusual fortitude. I'm willing to place my full trust in you. Please, come with me. We happen to be in need of competent fellows like yourself. To see some... Friends from a distant land. They have offered their assistance in restoring the Lawrence clan to its former glory. So he trusts us solely based on your etiquette. Well then, let's get going, shall we? You'll understand everything in due course. Do you think his friends are the Fatui? Things will get sticky if the Fatui happen to recognize you. What should we do? 